she said that she loved me. Is this 23 year old's online girlfriend telling him the truth? Or is their relationship full of lies? Beautiful woman that I thought that I could commit to and have a serious relationship. After two years and $10,000, Malachi and Mary still haven't met. She hit me with this, anything you pay me, I'll pay you back. And I have the proof for it. The Bank of America account. Hello, your account balance is 45 million. He even drove from North Carolina to her address in California, but she couldn't come outside to meet him. I'm literally outside. You don't, you think I'm kidding or playing with you, bro. Well, that just makes me think me and you need to hit the road and go knock on some doors. Join us as we hit the road to knock on Mary's door ourselves and try to find Malachi some answers. Oh, oh this is your apartment. You're 207? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your engagement with our videos help us reach new audiences and can potentially stop other people from being scammed. All right, so I got another case. It's from a man named Malachi. I'll read a little bit of his email. He says, hello, my name is Malachi. I need your help. For the past two and a half years, I've been communicating with this person named Mary Williams. I'm beginning to feel like I'm being scammed. I would greatly appreciate any guidance or assistance you can provide. Thank you for your time and understanding. Sincerely, Malachi. And he's, so he's young, he's 23. She's 23. This is one of the younger cases we've gotten. Hello, Catfish team. I'm Malachi. I'm 23 years old, and I currently live in St. Barron, Ohio. I've been cooking ever since I was little, always in the kitchen with my moms and Nana. I do steaks, chicken, like you name it, I could do it. The imagination is the only thing that could hold you back, and I got plenty of that. My experience with the lady so far has been decent, I could say. I've had a girlfriend in high school. We got together around my freshman year. Then we departed during my senior. I know I might be young, but social media has not been my big thing. My Instagram is like brand, brand new. Just got like random pics of me, random quotes, muscle cars. Malachi wasn't on dating apps and hardly used social media. He wasn't looking for anyone to date, but an account on Instagram popped up and sent him a message. I was at home whenever she reached out to me for the first time. Her name's Mary Williams. Well, she first sent, hey, how are you? Then she sent me, this is Mary. My friends call me May. Then I responded, what would you want from me? What do you need from me? I'm looking for a nice man to talk to. Haven't found anybody appealing yet. This, this, and that. She said when we first started talking that she was 21. Lives in El Monte, California, but is born and raised in San Diego. Humble tone, curly hair, brown eyes, rose tattoo on her right arm, moon tattoo on her upper right shoulder, spiritual, very religious, uh, talked about family morals, values, uh, support systems, what's needed in a relationship to thrive and prosper, you know. The things that I was attracted to was her personality, her charisma, the way that she constantly was always there for me. And I mean, not for nothing, the way she looked. When I opened up her Instagram profile for the first time, I saw one to two pictures. I asked her why exactly were there only, you know, one or two pictures. She responded um, that she's new to social media and that this was her first time doing like something like this. First photo that I've ever seen received from her was a photo of her just chilling on a bed, looking at the camera, kissing. At first, I was a bit skeptical of the whole thing because I was like, you don't even know me, but yet you're over here wishing me a good morning. You're wanting to wish me a good night randomly. You're wanting to stay up and talk to me throughout the day, even though I have all this stuff I had going on during that time. Malachi was skeptical of Mary's intentions of getting to know him, but despite that, the two got to know each other better and talked constantly. Mary's hobbies consisted of hiking on the weekends, painting, doing makeup on the side, 
anything cosmetology related or anything outdoor related, honestly. She went to school for cosmetology, some type of institution out there in San Diego. When me and her started talking, she was in her final month of being there. She said that she likes uh, Japanese cuisine, sushi, fast food, pizza, and uh, like homemade things. And I was told her, like, I have no problem doing any of that for you. I mean, she calls me king. She calls me daddy. I called her queen. I called her honey bun. You know, she said that she loved me uh, Valentine's Day. And she just kind of sort of expected it back for me. So I just sent her, I hit her with the one, four, three, smiley, kissy face. I planned out what we should do, where we should go. I just was going to take her out on a nice little dinner date, then get to know her more, keep her out there for a week, have a good time, go to the beach, go to the museum. Um, you know, like I had a whole, whole thing planned, but. Everything was going great between Malachi and Mary, and the two even had plans for future dates together. But soon after, Mary needed help with multiple expenses. After the first month, everything was good until she asked me to help her with her school bills. And that consisted of a final exam that cost 200 and whatever dollars. I asked her, how do you not have the funds to, you know, support yourself right now? She hit me with this, anything you pay me, I'll pay you back. And I have the proof for it. The conversation that she told me about the whole bank account was, babe, I have something very important to tell you. All you have to do, do not open your mouth to anybody else about this. I will pay you back everything you've ever given to me tenfold, even put your name on this. So the random bank account number went to a Bank of America account with $45 million. Hello, Larry. Your account balance is $45,328,323.14. To hear more account details, press 5. I never in my life ever heard that, been around that type of money, anything. So me hearing that, and at that being her father's account, I was like, well, baby girl, you are one blessed because your mom and dad have literally given you generational wealth if you manage your money properly. I didn't even care about payback, honestly. I just wanted to help somebody who needed help. She was in college, apparently, doing all this while her grandmother was sick. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to relieve the burden off your shoulders, help you do this, even though I don't have the financial stability to do so myself. The next reason I had to send her money was uh, her grandmother's uh, medical bills. She is sick. I don't know. She sent me a picture of her. She said that she's bedridden, can hardly move around the house. She slipped and fell pretty bad, hurt herself, and needed to get her medicine. Her grandmother is the last living relative that she has. If she in the medicine in total, she asked for about $350 to $450. She tells me all the time that her grandmother uh, says hi and that she appreciates everything I've done for her and her granddaughter. And me being the kind person I am, my grandmother was also bedridden, could not move around, had MS, was really, really, really sick. The next reason that she would need money for me is now to fix her phone so she can give me a FaceTime call. I proceeded to ask why, considering that the two calls that you've given me in the first two months have only lasted for a minute and a half. She proceeded to hit me with the excuse of, my phone is broken or my internet is bad. To fix her phone, I proceeded to then again reach into my pocket, pull out almost near $1,000 to fix the phone that still have yet to get an actual FaceTime call that lasts over a minute and a half. I paid her phone bill a collective of like 10 
20 times, $150 each time. Every month, basically, she would come and be like, hey, I need you to pay my phone bill or I won't be able to talk to you. I want to talk to my husband. I want to talk to you. I don't want to ever miss chatting with you. I don't want to ever do this. I don't want to ever do that. Malachi paid for everything that Mary had asked for, medication, phone bills, and her student expenses. At this point, the two were making plans to meet up, but Mary would need help paying for that as well. Now we're getting ready to meet. She wanted me to step up and now send $1,450 for a first class all round ticket. She sent me the picture of the ticket I felt very excited. I even over-prepared, got a whole lot of things ready, lined up in order for this day, reserved dinner reservations, hotel plans, amusement park plans. And I told her, okay, I'm gonna have a surprise for you when you get here. I get out the car with my roses that she said was her favorite. On the sign, I get, welcome Mary, this is Malachi. I waited and sat there for five hours, waiting, asking, where are you at? What's happening? And then I get a picture of her uh, holding up a peace sign, smiling, saying that she got held up by ice. I got a whole lot of things that ultimately have just completely went to waste because she has not shown up. I buy two more tickets. Each one apparently needed to be first class and the same amount as the first one. She said, go ahead and tell your family and friends that you know you're soon going to be able to see your wife or whatever. I was like, okay. So I tell my friends, I told my moms, and here we are two years later, still nothing. I mean, at first I was happy for you. But as it progressed and, like, weird incidences started happening, like, you know, that mail at the house, and I was like, what? What is it? Oh, I don't know. She's some check she wants me to cash, or it just sent my little mommy antennas up. Um, I don't like how much she has used you. She has taken a lot of money and resources from you. Having been stood up in the airport and paid for multiple tickets for Mary to never show up, Malachi feels that he's doing the right thing by helping her out and hopes the two will meet up together face to face. At the end of the day, I only did what I thought was right, in my opinion. What I was looking at was a beautiful woman that I thought that I could take serious and commit to and have a serious relationship with. I just want to know exactly what I've sat here, wasted two and a half years on and $10,000 on. I'm tired of sitting here talking to just a phone and me trusting you and believing you the way I have and you completely backstabbing me and doing this constantly like you've shown me for the last two and a half years has really not helped your case at all. If you told me this was real, I honestly would be relieved like, I put myself in so many holes, dug myself so many graves, all in the name of this love that has never loved me back, honest. All right, Seekers, we knew we had to help Malachi, so the research team sat down to go over all of the information he had given us. We have a lot of information we can look into. She sent him her home address, which is in El Monte which is not too far from us. No, Brian. like two hours. So you also have images of this woman she's claiming to be and some cash app and Western Union transactions. So something I noticed is when he had sent over all the images for Mary is that the majority of the images are a bit racy. So you think that they're, that's what's catching his attention? And I believe so, yes. I would say that that probably has a high likelihood to affect a young man. And another thing that I want to talk about, because he didn't mention this in his interview, he drove all the way from North Carolina to California, but never was able to get inside the apartment. I wonder why. I'm trying to f show you. I'm literally outside. You don't, you think I'm f kidding or playing with you, bro. And I'm literally sitting outside. It doesn't look like that at all. It's cloudy. 
outside, there's a truck right there and a black car right there. And your photo, it's completely sunny and empty as f Gotta love showing up just for somebody that you love and truly care about only for them to not really want to see you or show you the same amount of respect or compassion as you have. So, thank you. It's always nice. Malachi is obviously a young man. We don't get a lot of cases where, you know, someone is completely unaware of some of the red flags that have popped up. He has his whole life ahead of him. What's he doing in this case where he's in this for two and a half years with somebody that's only chatted with him on the phone for a collection of five minutes? How do we help this guy? After discussing Malachi's case, the research team came up with a game plan and got to work. Okay. It's time to start digging into what Malachi had sent us. So we have cash app transactions. We have the address in El Monte where Mary lives. We also have a copy of the plane ticket, her email address, and a bunch of images that Malachi had sent over to us. I was just wondering, are these all the transactions for him? Yeah, so basically what happened was Malachi had sent over two profiles from cash app. And did you guys get a chance to look at those two profiles? Yeah, we were looking into it and we couldn't find anything for those usernames. He said, that's all on that account. I lost access to the other one because I lost the password and the balance was negative $8,555 for reasons unknown. And since then, he can't log in at all? No, he cannot log in. Interesting. Yes. So with the transactions, we can chat with Malachi about those later. As for the transactions he did send to us, let's just look into those and see if we can create a crypto graph. Okay, sounds good. So we should probably look into the El Monte address. All right, so I got the address pulled up right here and the address checks out. Um, there's no way for us to verify apartment to apartment who's actually living there. So I think the best way would be to go check in person. If you look back at the apartment, it looks like there's some sort of security to get into the actual complex. Yeah, it looks like a key card reader mm -hmm. on the wall. So maybe if we can get a hold of the front desk or something, we could try to mm -hmm. get some information. But I think probably going in person would be the best bet. Yeah. Lastly, we have about 30 images that Malachi had sent over to us for this person he's talking to, Mary. Yeah, let me look this up real quick on our website. So I just ran a search and I want to share with you what I found here. Lots of escort pages um, under different names. So here we have Michelle Stubbs, uh, 803 number. Then we have Sam under a 516 number. And we have another, uh, this is Sam in Palm Springs. This one doesn't have a name, but she is in San Francisco. So another completely different location. And then we have her as Linda here. Um, and this looks like Las Vegas and Los Angeles. So on Instagram, we have a few different profiles as well. Um, this one's Chloe, and then we have Diana. This is the name that we mainly saw uh, when searching her. This name came up the most mm -hmm. uh, when searching social media. Uh, has quite a few photos, but not that much. This one's under the name Mia. So a lot of Instagram profiles under different names somewhat of a red flag, wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely. If anything, this just proves that her photos have been stolen. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let's see if we could find the real person. I think we need to spend a little more time looking into who she is and confirm her identity. And in the meantime, Drew and I will head over to the El Monte address to see who's living there. Sounds good. Okay. After a few days of researching, the team had some answers but we felt we could take it a step further to get definitive proof for Malachi and confirm who was living in this address in El Monte. So Brienne and I hit the road. Let's get on the road, Brienne. All right, let's go. Well, we made it to El Monte. Why are, we, why are we in El Monte, Brienne? So story behind this is he lives on the East Coast he drove from where he lived, I believe North or South Carolina, to California, just so he can get a chance to meet Mary, who he had been talking to for some time. And so when he, he got here to her apartment and he was parked up front, he claimed that he called her to come down and she never came down. 
Why didn't he ever just go and knock on the door? He said that she was telling him all kinds of stories and giving him all kinds of excuses that she was on house arrest and um, something about the pipe burst in the apartment and the landlord wasn't going to let her come out of the apartment, go downstairs. And, and so he never ended up seeing her. Okay, I don't know how far the, dr the drive is from south or north or, or Ohio country. or whatever. You went cross country. In my head, you're coming out of the house, right? Maybe his nerves got the best of him and he just saw it as a sign. And when she was giving him a bunch of excuses, he decided it wasn't the right timing. I'm not sure. Well, we're knocking on this door. We're going to get the answers. We're going to find out who lives here. Hopefully, this person isn't using some random person's address. We're going to figure out who lives here. Why did this person tell Malachi that they live here. We're going to get the answers. We're going to find out the truth. It's 101, so we need to go up one. Maybe right here. These are stairs. Yeah. Hi. 207? It's like right here. A little bit further. Oh, wait. Is it back now? No, it was a little bit further. Oh, okay. We, we walked, we walked by around, 107 huh? down two. there. It's right here. This one, I think. All right. Ready? Oh, well, this is your apartment. You're 207? Yes. Uh, what's this about? So, do you know this woman? Her name's Mary? Mm -hmm. You've never seen this woman before? No. Okay. Um, so, we're trying to help a guy out. He is in a relationship with this person, mm -hmm. and she gave him this address and said she lives here. Never seen her. Never seen her. Okay. Um, yeah, she said, I think she's been living here a year or two? Yeah, yeah. for a couple of years. You were saying that people, other people live with you? Yeah, I have uh, my ex and her mother live here. Okay, and none of them are by the name of Mary. They don't look like this person. No. But we also just wanted to let you know that your address was used yes. in whatever way. Like, she's claiming she lives. Many people know this is an apartment complex. It oh. used to be a tire shop. Check cash in place. Gotcha. So. Oh, I see. Gotcha. How long have you been living here? Almost five years. Five years. Okay. And this apartment complex has only been here seven years. Okay. And Thank no you. Marys that look like that. Gotcha. Okay. Nobody's ever come here and asked either, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Nathan, it was really nice meeting you. We yeah, really you appreciate too. your time. Thank yeah. you so much for a answering all of our questions okay. and, you know, being so open. Yeah. No we appreciate it. Well, you have a good day. You too. Thank All right, you, thank you. Thank you, bro. <laughs> nice meeting you. All right. Yeah, you too, All right. Man. See you. After we were able to confirm that Mary wasn't living at this address, we decided to head back to the office and set up another call with Malachi the next day to let him know everything that we had found. If you're looking to contact us and you think you might need our help finding out who you're communicating with online, or maybe you need help breaking through to a friend or a family member, don't hesitate to reach out to our email, share my story at socialcatfish.com. We can help you find the answers you've been looking for. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And once you've done that, give this video a like too. Hello, Malachi. Are you ready for today? Yes, I am ready. Hopefully to find out who I've been talking to or at least have a little bit of background. Malachi, you've been talking to Mary for over two years now. Tell us, what are some of the reasons you decided to seek answers after so long? At first, it really wasn't even like red signs to me. I just like did things out of the kindness of my heart. Are you still in love with Mary? I still have feelings for them, for her, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like, what else do you expect me to do when you've kind of just, you know, used me and manipulated me, kind of? 
Well, Malachi, we have all of the answers that you've been looking for, and we want to share with you what we found. All righty. I'm ready to hear them. So the first thing that I want to share with you is the, the plane ticket. While we noticed some inconsistencies with the ticket itself, the itinerary that she had sent you, we noticed at the top it stated it was a flight from San Diego to Jacksonville. Right underneath that, it also states it's an itinerary for California to North Carolina. At the very bottom, it states a whole list of, of flights and connecting flights that would be taken for that itinerary. So we're missing some in-between flights. It doesn't even yeah. make sense how you could get from point A to point B, and then all of a sudden you're over here across the United States. And so for this reason, this itinerary is not valid. This is a fake itinerary. Did you uh, notice any of this information? I did not. I'm very new to stuff like that. That's like, literally, this is my first time ever dealing with something like this. So me seeing that, I'm like, okay, cool. I just looked at it and was like, all right, bet you're coming. Say less. Now in the, in the intro interview, you said something completely different. You said that you knew it was fake. I mean, I was knew it. I didn't know, but I knew after my mom, my brother, everybody was like, this is not a real ticket. So after your family had told you, hey, this ticket's fake, this is not a real itinerary, why did you keep going with a relationship? And you continue to send her money even after the fact. So what made me really stay was her saying that you know every relationship has its up and downs if you can't get through the hard times you're not truly in love with the person literally would throw it in my face type stuff all right well drew and i took a road trip to el monte mm -hmm. and you also took a road trip to the same apartment complex correct yep a year okay. ago this kind of blows my mind so you drove yeah. all the way from north carolina to California, but you never got to the door. Why is that? Because as soon as, as soon as she responded, it was, I can't really come outside due to me being on house arrest due to the landlord saying that if I don't pay a $950 leak, you can't visit. And me not knowing anything about like California tenant laws, renting, all that. So after I sat out there, got all those excuses and fake sorries. I, uh, I call my mom and I just break down, honestly. I'm like, why did I seriously like do this? Why did I come out here, waste my time for nothing? It's pretty crazy because we were actually able to get inside and um, we headed over to the apartment where she claims to be living. And we walk by this guy and this guy is sitting on the steps. And so we go to the door, we start knocking and that guy gets up and he's like, that's my apartment. What do you guys need? And so we start chatting with him. We start explaining the story. We showed him a picture of Mary. He said he had never seen her ever. He also stated that he had been living in that apartment for over five years with his ex, and there's no one else that had ever lived in that apartment with him. I don't know, I'm speechless, honestly. Why do you think that Mary would have you drive that far to go to an apartment she doesn't live at? I have no idea, honestly. Are you sure you don't have any idea? I have zero. Literally, before I even drove out there, she spent a whole week convincing me to even do it. Like literally, we planned everything a week in advance. And I sat there and told her like, I'm not gonna do this if I'm gonna like, you know, not have anything or see you. Well, Malachi, we spent a lot of time pulling the information that we're providing today. We ran into two issues though, man. The first issue was we tried to send her over a link to track her IP address. And when she clicked on it, we found that she was running a VPN. So we weren't able, we weren't able to get any real data. Yeah. Another issue that we had was we ran multiple reverse image searches on her and we couldn't pinpoint an official account 
for her. We found hundreds of accounts, hundreds. Oh my. And yes, and the majority of her pictures were found on escort sites. But we also found a profile name that, that was attached to these images and it seemed like she was mostly going under the name Diana Dahl. This scammer was having Malachi do a lot of dangerous stuff. The fact that he had someone's account and social security number was concerning to us. A few days before this interview, we decided to dig deeper into the $45 million this person was claiming to have. And then the account type is a Bank of America, Larry Williams, and then we also have his account number, social security number, and then the tax ID, right? Yep. Is there anything else? That is literally all I have. Okay. For that. Okay, I got you. All right, thank you, bro. No problem. All right, talk to you soon. It's an invalid social security that he gave you. It doesn't exist. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, but I'm thinking too, like, how can you create a bank account with a fake social security number? Wouldn't that be flagged when you create the account? It has $45 million in it. Let's just call and see. All right, let's just call. Just. You know, something that we also noticed, and I just wanted to touch on that really fast, is we did call the bank using the security information that you gave to us. And I want you to know that I found out that the social security is not valid. Okay. And that's another thing. So she sent over checks to me to cash or whatever. I cashed one to send it to her because she said that she needed it. I went, cashed it. It hit my account only to get immediately taken off and say that it was fraudulent and not real. And I'm like, why are you lying to me? Why, what's happening? I don't understand any of it, to be honest. Do you have access to that check still or? No, I threw them away. I didn't want nothing to do with them. Especially if I could get in trouble for doing something that I thought I was helping you with. Because I heard that you could possibly get in trouble for doing stuff like that, so. Is that one of the reasons why you reached out to us? One of them, yes. Malachi. Right. This person is disrespecting you. They're manipulating yeah. you. They're putting you in a bad situation. They have you accepting money, checks from people you don't know. And then yeah. they're asking you to move that money through crypto. And it's putting you at risk. And, I, and, and I'm not trying to scare you, but I, I do feel like you should understand the gravity of this situation that this person has put you in. And our recommendation is to not accept any more money from this person. Do not sh send any money on behalf of this person. How much have you received? Three to four thousand. I just feel like we're missing something, man. Like you say you're scared about something, but I feel like every time we speak to you, you have new information for us. So now it's the checks, then it's this account, then it's the cash app gets closed down. Your cash app got closed down and, and it, it was negative $8,000. I didn't even know that. I heard that from Brianne. Yeah. It just feels yeah. like there's more and more activity that's unfolding yeah. every time we speak to you. Did this person ever have access to your cash app? Uh, I gave her it once because she swore that she needed it for her grandmother. And then immediately after my cash app got closed, my Navy Fed account got closed and terminated and also negative. Are they linked? They were linked. Okay, so once you were negative in Cash App, Cash App was basically a reflection of your Navy Fed account, which means your Navy Fed account was also negative. So do you have to pay that back? Oh, I already, already have. Like no. I said, yeah. I've wasted so much money paying back fines and fees that I don't, I'm not supposed to owe all because of excuses, lies, my religion thrown in my face. Like, like I said, I know it looks stupid because there's a whole lot of red flags that everybody else can see, but like, I genuinely took it seriously and like was putting my, like working my ass off to provide and give her everything that she was wanting and needing. Same with her grandmother. What will it take for you to 
block her for good and not respond to her anymore. Whenever she can stop making all these emails and hitting me up. This scammer is not going to stop contacting you. They've gotten $8,000 from your cash app. They've gotten $10,000 from you. They've gotten you to funnel $4,000 for them. They're not going to stop. You have to, you have to make the choice to not reply. They're going to keep on making these fake profiles, these fake accounts, these fake emails, and they're going to keep mm -hmm. reaching out to you. But ultimately it's up to you to not reply, Malachi. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have been duped. You have been scammed. You have been tricked and you have been lied to. I'm just speechless, man, honestly. <laughs> Got the best of me, honestly, that's all I can say. Today it ends. Today it all ends, yes. Yes. Malachi, you're young, man. You're, you got a lot of life ahead of you. What are, like, what are you doing getting caught up in? I was just trying something new and that was not a good idea. Uh, Malachi, we appreciate you reaching out to us though, man. I appreciate y'all more. Like, a whole weight literally is lifted, to be honest. Like, just thank you. Good. Good, man. You're welcome. You know, don't forget to, to block this person. Yes, ma'am. Seekers, it's almost time for our weekly live stream. We'll get a live update from him and figure out how he's dealt with everything after blocking this scammer. Tune in this Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. If you have been involved in a romance scam, don't forget to report it. It helps get the word out and potentially stops other people from being scammed. Thanks for watching. Don't forget all of our new videos go out every Wednesday. If you like this video, subscribe. And if you wanna see more, you should probably click one of these two videos.